In this video, we will discuss on alveolar arterial gradient. Alveolar arterial gradient is the difference between the oxygen concentration in the alveoli and arterial system. It is denoted by P big AO2 minus P small AO2. Alveolar arterial gradient helps us to narrow down the differential diagnosis for hypoxia. While the partial pressure of arterial oxygen can be easily determined from arterial blood gas analysis, partial pressure of alveolar oxygen is determined from the following equation. Partial pressure of alveolar oxygen is the difference between the partial pressure of inspired oxygen minus alveolar carbon dioxide. R denotes the respiratory quotient which is roughly 0.8. Respiratory quotient is the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide that is exchanged during a respiratory cycle. The partial pressure of inspired oxygen is the difference between the atmospheric pressure and the water vapor pressure times fraction of inspired oxygen concentration. Thus, substituting these values, we find that the partial pressure of alveolar oxygen is about 150 minus partial pressure of alveolar carbon dioxide minus respiratory quotient, which is 0.8. In a perfect system, no alveolar arterial gradient would exist as we assume that all the oxygen that enters into the alveoli will diffuse into the arterial system. However, owing to physiological VQ mismatches, there is usually a gradient of 5 to 10 mm of mercury in a young adult non-smoker breathing air. So hypoxia may occur due to defect in oxygenation where the inspired oxygen concentration may be insufficient such as low FiO2 and high altitude. Here, both alveolar and arterial partial pressure of oxygen are reduced. So, the alveolar arterial gradient remains normal. In conditions of defective ventilation, where there is inability to remove carbon dioxide such as acute CNS event, neuromuscular paralysis and sedation, both PaO2 are reduced. Even here, we note that the alveolar arterial difference is normal. Conditions where there is diffusion defect, shunt or VQ mismatch, the alveolar capillary junction gets distorted and oxygenation gets impaired such as pneumonia, pulmonary edema, interstitial lung disease and ARDS. Though the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen remains normal, but the arterial partial pressure of oxygen is reduced. The alveolar arterial gradient is increased. So in broad sense, alveolar arterial gradient helps us in identifying the step where the oxygenation may get impaired. It's also important to remember that this gradient tends to increase with aging. Probably this is related to a reduction in the diffusion surface as one ages. Roughly, the gradient increases by 1 mm of mercury with every 10 years of age. As the FiO2 increases, the alveolar oxygen concentration increases. Thus, the gradient also tends to increase by 5 to 8 mm of mercury with every 0.1 increase in FiO2. In such situations where we are not sure whether this increase in gradient is per se due to increase in FiO2 or due to a lung pathology, calculation of arterial to alveolar ratio will be beneficial. In normal circumstances, the arterial to alveolar partial pressure ratio should be more than 75%. If it is less, probably we are dealing with a pathological lung disease. In summary, hypoxia can be classified based on the alveolar arterial gradient. If a patient has normal gradient, probably it is related to alveolar hyperventilation, low partial pressure of inspired oxygen or abnormal hemoglobin that has poor oxygen carrying affinity. If the gradient is increased, it probably reflects an alveolar capillary disease which may result in a diffusion defect or a ventilation perfusion mismatch 
right to left shunts which could be intrapulmonary or contracardiac and also in increased oxygen extraction conditions this gradient can be increased. If you like this video, please subscribe and follow us for new updates.